Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, this is a project that I've been working on for four to five weeks now. It's called ELSIS Large Scale Evolution Simulator. I was inspired to make this video after watching a video from Kerry. I'll have a link to his, uh, his channel in the description. He made a video called Evolvio, and I left a comment saying I thought it was amazing. You know, I can probably make something like that and have, you know, add a little bit more functionality to it. And uh, after thinking about thinking about it for a while, I started working on it, and this is the end result. Uh, you probably can't see my mouse right now, so uh, whenever I press one of these buttons down here, I'll I'll say that I'm pressing it, so you know that I'm gonna press it. So you can see that there's some of the there's some buttons: load, vision, save, blah blah blah. Um, so let me just quickly tell you what some of the buttons do. Load, you can load the simulation. Uh, save, you can save the simulation. It saves it into a file, which I'll talk about later. Uh, vision, I'll talk about later. Draw net, I'll talk about later. Uh, greater than, greater than, you can speed up the simulation with that. Um, essentially, the simulation can double in speed. The less than, less than, you can uh, slow down the simulation. Um, and it can, uh, you can slow it down well below... Uh, the normal speed so you can go to like half speed quarter speed like that so I'm gonna press the create button now so okay so it just creates um, a randomly not not randomly the the map is actually generated based on a hyperparameter file which I'll talk about later um, so the, the hyperparameter has a whole bunch of different things you can do change like you can change the um, the amount of damage creatures do to each other and things like that and you can change the map completely based on the seeds. So I went with the same sort of functionality as um, with Evolvio, <clears throat> where the mouth color has to be the same color as the tile, otherwise the creatures take damage. Also, you can see that here there are six. Uh, this creature here has six uh, sensors. Uh, the two on the side, the black ones, actually only detect tile color, and the white sensors uh, can detect other creatures. The red line that you see here is the spike. Um, so if that spike, the red spike, touches any other creature, the creature that is dealing the damage can actually suck away the life or the energy from the other creature. Uh, right now, if the rhythm reason simulation is not moving at all, is because I have the um, the slow button pressed. I pressed it a bunch of times, so right now it's probably like updating every like 10 seconds or something. So it's pretty slow. Uh, if you see the uh, the black lines here, <clears throat> the things that can detect tiles, if it's black, then that means the creature is currently eating or wants to eat. And if it's white, then that means the, the creature is not eating at that moment. So a thing that you can do is essentially if you select a certain region, so you can just drag and select. So suppose I want to select here, I can just drag and select. And so the selected region, when you press spacebar, it actually brings up the oldest creature so in this case this is this guy is the oldest creature um, reef also the names are completely randomly generated it's uh, unlike evolve you where the names were kind of uh, you know generated based on you know some characteristics my name is just uh, these names are just generated completely randomly um, <clears throat> and you can see the uh, neural network drawn up here uh, the neural network group, the lines are actually represented with red and green. So red is a positive, uh, negative connection, and green is a positive connection. And now, if you press the actual, so that this creature actually died, that's why the color is red. So let me just pick another creature. So if I click draw net, it actually draws the entire neural, uh, neural network for that creature. So interestingly, you can actually select again, and you can see, well, how much does this neural network uh, differ from somebody else's neural network? few changes you can see like some of the lines changed so those are changes that happen most likely because of mutations um, so let's compare their neural network compared to someone completely different over here we should see a completely different change see that so these guys neural network is completely different from those guys so that's how you know the two species are completely different so another thing that you should be able to see here at the bottom left um, is an ancestry tree. So that ancestry tree is essentially drawn through a depth first search because every creature can actually remember um, its own children unless that creature dies then that creature forgets its children um, because I just delete the, the, the child from um, the tree list but essentially the creature essentially just does a depth first search and it can draw an ancestry tree for every creature that is currently alive 
So uh, let me see if I can find a big answer to treat. Oh, like this guy. So CKOM, he has a lot of children. So he's, you know, I guess a very fertile creature. The creatures um, that he's creating are giving birth to lots of other creatures. And you can see even in the names that they're slowly diverging away. But their neural networks don't diverge as much unless specified by the um, the hyperparameter file because you can actually change the mutations and you can make them have a lot more mutations so that they diverge into different species a lot quicker. Um, draw neural network. Anyways, um, so I guess let me just undraw the neural network and slow down it, slow it down quickly because I want to talk about the uh, the brain right now. The node, uh, so each so there so in inputs there are a total of twenty inputs. Sensor one, sensor two, sensor three. Um, so there's total since there are a total of four sensors that can detect each creature. There's a total of um, eight inputs for the sensors. Um, four of them being distance, and four of them being the hue, the color of the uh, creature. The spike hue is when that spike hits another creature, it can detect the color of the creature. So maybe they don't want to kill their own kin based on the color that they see. They can you know quickly retract it. Collide is essentially just um, negative one or one negative one. If it does make if the creature collides with someone and one if it doesn't if he, uh, the creature doesn't collide. Um, collide hue it takes the average hue of the collision. So maybe like it's he, the creature is colliding with two three creatures, then it's just the average hue of all the creatures. The tile hue the tile under the creature currently. Um, the tile saturation how much energy does the uh, the tile have at that moment. Um, uh, left hue, the same. Uh, that's left hue and right hue, right uh, right saturation, left saturation. That's with the um, the the uh, the black sensors, which can detect tiles. Um, radius, the radius of the creature currently, so it can kind of like tell how big it is. And memory, memory is just the loop of the 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 two mem the memory out one and memory out two just loop back into memory in one and memory in two. So the outputs, uh, it can the output to the neural network is the forward velocity that the creature wants to have, the angular velocity that the creature wants to have, the mouth hue, the body hue. It can change its body color. So so sometimes you might see like a creature blink a lot. So that's how you know that species might be able to tell themselves apart because they're blinking a certain color. Um, eat. So they can <clears throat> if it's negative, then they're not eating. If it's positive, they're eating. Birth. Um, if it's over zero, they can give birth. Um, based on if they're based on a certain size, which is not, it's not really important. Um, spike length, um, the length of their spike that they want to extend out, and memory one uh, out and memory two out. I already talked about. So another thing that you can kind of do is, uh, so when you select something, you can press spacebar to select it, but you can also select a certain region and press delete, and it'll just delete the creatures that are under the selected regions. Suppose you don't like a certain species, the way they're evolving, they're kind of just evolving to, you know, take advantage of the fact that nobody in their little group is killing them. Um, and that might be boring to you, so you can just select and delete. And it'll just delete that region. Well, now you can see that the brain is completely different. So now, instead of having a total of 40 neurons in just one layer, this creature has um, a total of 20 neurons 10 uh, in two layers, so 10 in each layer. So the brain can actually, you can actually change the brain size and the number of neurons or or uh, number of hidden layers that it should have in the hyperparameter file. And I'll go over that right now. So when you first run the simulator, um, you'll actually and quit, uh, press the create button. You'll actually create this hyperparameter file, world hyperparameter.txt. So we can see that there's a total of 25 lines here. So first of all, neural network. Make sure that uh, well. First of all, just make sure whenever you type something, there's a distance. So there's like this space here. So there's a space between everything. That'll if you don't put that space there, it will it'll throw up and you're gonna get an error. Or it might not even work. So always have that space there. So you can see with the neural layers, there's a total of um, ten and ten. So basically, there's two uh, layers, each with ten neurons. Previously, it was actually this 40, um, but you could change it to whatever you want. But just make sure that the total number of neurons uh, are under 100. So 20, 20, and 10 is perfectly fine. Um, but generally, you want to have a lot of neurons in your first layer, so you know, so you can get a bigger boost of decisions. 
Another good one that I've tried before is essentially 40 and 10, which is make sure that it's under 100 um, if you have a good PC. But in general, just you know, I, I would suggest just keep it under 50. So it was 40 before, so I'll just change it back to 40. Uh, minimum number of creatures, um, 60 is good. I've also tried 75 before, um, but just make sure it's uh, below 100. Visual speed, it's set to 11. So the entire program is actually the rendering part and the physical calculation part are completely separated. So once you get over 11, no rendering will be, will happen. So this actually helps make things a little bit more efficient. So you can, uh, the simulation can go through more years quicker than if it was also, you know, doing the visualization, the rendering part at the same time. So over 11, uh, so if your speed goes over 11, um, it, nothing will be rendering on the screen. The climate is set to three. Uh, I uh, this uh, so Elsas has no um, seasons. So to counter for that, there's actually minimum lifespans. So and the creature's life, the decreasing of a creature's life will actually depend on how much energy the creature has. If the creature has a lot of energy, its life will decrease a lot slower compared to creatures with low energy. So now with that, there's no need for climates. The climate can be static, a single number. Um, eat damage, you can see it's currently set to zero. So that means the creatures can eat whatever they want. So a creature that evolves to survive on one side of the map can perfectly easily survive on another side of the map. Um, but you can also bump this number up to like two or three if you want. Well, right now I've just set it to zero. Um, also, if you make any changes here and you're afraid that they're not correct, what you can actually do is just delete this hyperparameter file and run the program again and just click create and it'll just create a default hyperparameter file again. Um, the velocity, angular, and fight, just don't mess with it. Um, I was just, you know, figuring it out, and I think this is the correct number, and it's perfectly fine. You can see some amazing behavior evolved with these. The at uh, ones are, are a little, little, just be a little bit more cautious when you change them. Um, so the world delta time, if, you, if this number is very low, like something like, you know, 0, 5, or, or 1, then... Um, the simulation will run too slow, or you might, it might it might run too slow, you know, for it might, you, have, you might have to wait a little bit longer for good evolution to happen. Uh, mutation number. The smaller this number gets, the more the chance of a mutation. So right now it's at 1,000. 500 means that there's a two times the chance of mutation now uh, for each neural connection. Um, and the way the calculation actually happens, so if I change it to 500, you can see that uh, each of these are set to one so there's a total of so we add these up there's a total of five percent chance for a mutation to happen right so whoops five over um 500 is one over 100 which is a one percent chance of mutation to happen so if i change this to 1000 now there is a half a percent chance of a mutation to happen if i was to increase this to maybe like um two now, 6 over 1,000 is the chance for a mutation to happen, where this thing is, you know, twice as likely to have a mutation than it was when it was 1. If you change any of these, the, the map will change in different ways. Um, soil fracture essentially is, well, how much water do you want? So if you change this number to, you know, like 0.5 or something, you'll, you'll see more water. Uh, if you change it to a higher number, then there will be um, more smoother land rather than having, like, water all over the place. Soil color, um, how much redness or how much like increase in ent intensity do you want? So those are the, uh, the some of the things that, whoops, that that are here. I just don't I don't want to go over in detail right now because I want to go over some other stuff. Uh, but I'll go over in more detail in a later video. I really think that this is the major change that um, is making the bigger difference. The fact that they have these huge vision lines in front of them. So they can easily see creatures that are in front of them and detect their color and choose not to attack based on that. So there's some directionality to them. And let me just turn them off because generally I just don't like looking at them. Um, makes things look a little bit more clustered. So when, let me just like zoom around and find some creatures. You can actually see many of them sort of flock in similar directions or they create these sort of chains where they follow each other. Uh, let me try to find a good example of that. 
Oh, like right here. All these four creatures are kind of like following each other. Or like I I've seen some of them like start spinning in circles. Like, like I guess kind of like a death spiral. But basically all the um, spikes will be facing away from them. So anyone that comes near the circle just basically gets eaten. Well, I don't know if I can find an example of that here. Oh, kind of like here, right here. Sort of. They were about to form, but then they kind of got deformed. But basically, you can kind of see them following each other in a circle. They can clearly see each other, but they're just making sure that they don't turn enough to kill the person in front of them. So rather than just spinning in circles, having... really doing nothing, they... they have more intricate behaviors, I guess. I was thinking about adding more, um... Vision, vision line so instead of just four they could have had like eight or something but maybe that will be for version two so there's like currently almost 1600 creatures oh there are 1600 creatures on this right now um another thing is if you zoom in the performance actually goes up and that's because the program actually doesn't render creatures that are not on the screen so if you zoom in things will actually get better so you can watch whatever um area that you want to watch but less lag they by the way detect but a, a bigger brain so like let me just figure it out what is this i think this is like 30 neurons here creatures that have so like this brain is can easily easily pick up water i mean they learn it right away you don't even need to run those simulations very long to be able to find that creatures can detect water oh right here with a little chain they just basically follow the person in front of them and try to kill not kill him let me just see what's the oldest creature. Generally, if I do this and you find the oldest creature, the chances that person that creature is gonna live is like very slim. Look at this guy; he has such a huge an huge ancestry tree. Um, the creatures have both uh, sexual and asexual reproduction, so this creature has two parents. Um, that's basically any creature that gets within double the radius. The creature that wants to initiate the birth will actually lose more energy. Um, so that way, um, the creature the creature that doesn't want to give birth isn't like, you know, getting killed just because he doesn't want to he or she doesn't want to give birth. Two thousand creatures now. So um, you don't really have to worry about performance as much because, like I said, the vision. Sorry, the um, the physical calculations happen separate from the rendering, completely separated. So this actually increases performance by a whole lot. All well, these creatures here, none of them have their spikes out. Let's see the oldest creature here. So if you if you find like some of these creatures boring, just like select and then like, press delete, and it'll just delete them. So these creatures have pretty much evolved not to fight. They stay very close. So I'm assuming more of them have um, two parents. Yeah, see? And you can see, like, their trees are huge. Um, oh, they're actually also huge, though. So they're obviously a lot better at not killing their own kins. Otherwise, they won't be here. Um, you can see, like, oh, like this guy. When he detected him, he turned off his, uh, or, like, pulled back his spike. So they've got, they've gotten really good at not avoiding each other and not killing their own kin. So the way the neural network, neural network generally calculates um, the values is it just takes the input and multiplies it by the weights, and each of these neurons is essentially just adding all its connections, adding from all its connections uh, by multiplying uh, each of these numbers through their connections, the whatever the weight of that connection is. And the the tan H is the non non linearity that's added on top of it, which just converts the number between negative one and one, and then the same process repeats again for the output. So that's how uh, generally a neural network calculates or does a normal feed forward. The other thing that I want to mention is the calculations that are happening here. So just under wall time, you'll see that there's over um, what is that? So there's over two million. Uh, 300,000 calculations happening so that is dependent on the brain size so there's over 2,600 creatures each with this you know large brain and so all those calculations actually needs to happen so one good way to know that you have a decent brain size 
and it's not too big is to know is basically if the number of calculations are under 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 100,000 for 60 creatures that way you know that your brain size isn't very large and it's enough to you know get complex behavior so I get, I, as you can see I changed the map seed to something different um, so what I want to talk about now is what I will be doing for version 2 of this simulator um, basically right now the brains are static right um, they're not evolving the only thing in that change in the brain are the actual um, uh, the neural connections so only the weights are changing so in the future what I'm thinking about doing for version 2 is actually implementing an algorithm that if you have seen my previous videos you have known that uh, one of the the algorithm that I'm using there is called NEAT, Neural Evolution of Augmenting Topologies, where each of the brain connections are actually represented as genes, and the brain sort of uh, evolves connections over time and neurons over time. And that makes for, you know, better evolution because now each species can sort of evolve towards a certain, you know, type of a brain structure where maybe they have a lot more recurrent neurons. And as you can actually see, the only... There are no new recurrent neurons here. Um, the only two recurrencies are here are with memory, but they have no weight connection. So what I want to add in the future is NEAT, which can actually have proper recurrent connections. So that will be the future. Um, as you can see, there are 1,200 creatures here. So this seed gives me two land masses. One of them has absolutely no one on it. And this one has lots of creatures on it. You click the vision line. Wow. So it can get pretty laggy. Um, so generally, once again, don't draw the net unless uh, because it can get pretty, pretty slow that way. The code I will also release after version 2 um, because, well, there's a lot of stuff that I need to do. Like, the, there are some bugs that I've kind of just commented out, some functionalities that I wanted to add, which I wasn't able to because of that. And since I've been working on it for so long, I just want to get it out already and make a video on it. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at at the moment. Well, look at these. these this is a very large chain here. The chain formation generally goes away if there's a lot of creatures that are spawning, um, which is unfortunate because that's a pretty cool behavior to have. Um, I'm sure there's other ways to get sort of chain formations. Maybe I can make the tiles have a, a lower climate. Right now the climate is one, so it's even lower. So the creatures are sort of forced to expand out or eat other creatures. Or they'll die really and this I think a list life system actually makes things a lot better because now the creatures have a set time to live they can't just you know stay alive forever they have to do something in the in the life they have so they have to get as big as possible otherwise you know so they can die slower basically that's the whole point the more energy they can consume the slower the health goes down whoa this is like a little army coming in here so I've actually not ran it for a very long time. Wow, so these guys all like running, uh, going towards the left. So I have i haven't ran it for a very long time. The highest that I've ran it for is like, I think maybe like two, three hundred years. And that was in the older version than, the, uh, than this. Um, I have really no interest in running it for a long time, to be honest. Um, I, I'd rather get started on version two right away. Um... If there's any functionalities that you guys think I should add, definitely let me know. Go to the link that I've given in the description, right click the folder, click download, and it'll start creating a zip file. We need a Google account to be able to download it because I tried downloading it without a Google account and it didn't work. So to be able to right click and download, you need a Google account. So when you double click it, it might ask you to um, 
install Unity if you don't have it installed. So you have to install it, otherwise it won't work. So um, just install it, and it'll just load like this. And yeah, that's it. Pretty simple. I'd love to hear comment and feedback on this. Um, how I can make it better or any functionalities that I should add that I haven't thought of. Yeah, thanks for watching.